Adventure. Tonight's story by Ron Evans is entitled Abandoned Ship. dark night in mid-June. The British cargo ship Morning Star was limping slowly across the Atlantic at five knots, plagued by engine troubles. She was coming from Cape Town and bound for New York. Because she had been unable to maintain the strict convoy speed, the other ships and their Navy escort had been compelled to leave her behind to struggle on alone. Even as she dropped back, her radio officer received a signal that a wolf pack of U-boats was in the vicinity to attack the convoy. A mile off her port bow, a periscope rose and cut a tiny white wake in the calm water. Stand by, torpedoes one and two. One and two, ready, sir. Five degrees to port. Steady now. Ready, Schultz? Ready, sir. Fire one. Fire one. Fire two. Fire two. Now we shall wait and see if we have made our first kill this boy. Oh, curse those engines. Third mate, hone the tape down below and see if he's making any headway. We're a sitting duck crawling along like this. Torpedo in the pool bow, sir. Helmsman, fire to starboard. Never mind the phone call. Sound the alarm. What is it, Captain? Torpedo, just past the cross our bow. Too damn close for my liking. Torpedo heading amidships to port, sir. It's gonna hit. Look, there it is. Now we can't avoid it. Hold tight. It's a hit. The second torpedo got her right amidships. Ah, first clear. We can go and attack the main convoy now, no. sir. Not yet, Schultz. It is better if there are no survivors. But, sir, Admiral Dunitz's orders are that... I don't care about his orders, Schultz. My wife and children were killed by their bombers over Essen. So why should I spare the lives of those Englishmen? Water is coming in too fast. As you can see, we're listening heavily already. All right, Mr. Hewitt. Order all hands to abandon ship. With this list, they can only use the two boats on the port side. Right on, Captain. We'll have to be fast before they send us another tin fish. In less than five minutes, the well-drilled crew had succeeded in abandoning the doomed ship. Fire had broken out, and the flames lit the night sky with an eerie red glow. Twenty-one men. Three hurt, Captain. Uh, not too bad. We'll contact the other boat when we're well away from the ship. Now keep pulling. We don't want to be too close when she goes down and the boilers blow. Right, well, lucky the weather's good. In that respect, yes, Mr. Hewitt. But as you're aware, we're 800 miles from the nearest land. That means we could spend the next few weeks in this darn boat. Ah, we could be lucky. One of the escort vessels come back to look for us. Well, don't pin any hope on that. If the wolf pack goes after the convoy, those escort ships are going to have their work cut out and won't have time to worry about survivors. She's going down, sir. Oh, you see that? A bow is lifting right up in the air. Yeah, I've seen it all before. This is the third time I've been torpedoed now. Oh, there she goes. Once proud morning star slid beneath the waves, her boilers bursting in her last dying gasp of defiance. As though it were the end of some show, the moon slipped out from behind some clouds and lighted the scene with silver. In the distance, Captain Shaw saw the other lifeboat. Call them over, Mr. Hewitt. 
We'd better make some concerted plan. Look. What's that over there? It's a U-boat surfacing. Here. Help me off with my uniform jacket. Why? I don't want you to get cold. I told you I've been through this before. The U-boats often pick up ship's captains so they can pump them for information. So I don't want to be identified. Do you understand? I'll say the captain went down with the ship. Do you hear that, lads? Aye, aye, aye. 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 The men in the boats watched the distant figures on the submarine's conning tower. Then came the shock. Everybody lie low! Down! Keep down, rolling! I ain't gonna let them! If those swines keep this up, they'll sink the boat! They'll give up shooting when they see no movement. I just hope they don't send one of their own boats off to check. Cease fire! Can you see any sign of life over there, Stoltz? Uh, nothing, sir. They could never have survived punishment like that. Uh, punishment it was, Stoltz. There, God, prepare to die. The U-boat slowly sank below the surface and headed north towards the convoy. The handful of uninjured survivors looked out across the now empty, moonlit sea. Check the casualties, Mr. Hewitt. I have already. Eleven dead, five badly wounded, and two with minor injuries. No, that's bad. I wonder how they fared in the other boat. Not as badly as us, Captain. Seems they're rowing over towards here. Slowly, but making headway. See what you can do for the wounded men. The cook and boatswain are managing well, sir. Both had first aid training. What shall we do with the dead, though? It'll be daylight soon. I'll say a few words over them before we put them over the side. Meanwhile, collect together their few possessions. Ahoy there! Are you all right, Captain Shaw? Aye, but our casualties are heavy. Come in alongside us. Where's the chief officer? He was killed, Captain. This is Riley, the second engineer. How many fit men? Eight, sir. Just enough to man one lifeboat, Captain. Yes. I think we'll have to abandon one of them. We'll see which one is the least damaged. Watson and Tully, make faster! Oh, oh, what a ruddy mess, Captain. Where do we go from here? I don't know yet, Mr. Riley. We'll have to wait till first light. Well, the dark human brought a hurricane lamp with him, and I've got some... No lights! We don't want to attract unwelcome attention. If that U-boat's still hovering around, he may just decide to use us for target practice again. If you can manage to see in this poor light, take a check of what stories you have in your boat. The second mate will check ours. Oh, yes, and make a list of your dead. Collect their possessions together. Before the sun rose on the eastern horizon, several of the more badly injured men died. As soon as it grew light... Captain Shaw read a short burial service and the bodies were consigned to the sea. The second engineer's lifeboat proved to be the least seaworthy and after the stores had been transferred, it was abandoned. A bright red sail was hoisted and the boat made slight headway in a barely perceptible breeze. The captain had decided on an eastern coast towards the Gulf of Guinea some 700 miles away. It was early in the afternoon when suddenly... Look! A periscope over there, Captain. That to hell with caution. Wave. It might just be one of ours. And if it isn't, have a little faith, Mr. Hewitt. Maybe we're too far off. If we can see them, they can see us. You can be sure of that. Look, it's turning across our bow. What a pity they don't fly flags on periscopes and we'd know what it is. The suspense is painful. They've seen us all right. You see, it's turning round towards our starboard side, giving us a good look over. It's coming up. You're right, Harris. She's going to surface. But remember, if it's a U-boat, the captain was killed. We were no mood to be interrogated by some Nazi. There's the conning tower coming up now. Then we'll know the answer. Well, it isn't a dairy, boys. Not with a conning tower like that. Could it be a Yank? Possibly, but I've got my doubts. And it certainly isn't Royal Navy either. Three French, maybe. No, they're using British stuff. It's quite a mystery, unless... 
Yes, it could be a night time. What would an Italian sub be doing around here? Following their Nazi masters to certain destruction as usual, I suppose. But why surface if she's Italian? There'd be no point. It's very disappointing anything the Italians have done so far in this war. Look, they're coming out onto the conning tower. Identify yourself. Who are you? Who are you? You're right, Captain. That's an Italian accent. Should I reply? Well, it won't do any harm, I suppose. Survivors of the British merchant ship Morning Star, don't last night by you both. Is your captain there? Uh, no, he was killed, went down with the ship. Bring your boat alongside. I want to talk to your senior officer. <laughs> survivors had little choice but to comply. The sail was lowered, and they pulled in to the side of the Italian submarine. The Italian commander, a short, fat man with a large, bushy moustache, watched the operation through a pair of binoculars. When the lifeboat bumped alongside, he leaned out over the conning tower rail. Who is your senior officer? You with the three gold bands on your sleeve. What are you? I'm the second engineer. Have you no navigating officer on board? Well, uh, yeah, I'm the second mate. You, the older man in the stern. You mean me? Yes, I mean you. I think you are the captain. No, you're mistaken. I'm the, uh, the most. <laughs> Wearing a tie, senor? I don't think so. Please uh, tell me the truth. I wish it to help you. Help us? I can't believe that. Why should you? You're your enemies. Enemies, perhaps, senor, but not the Germans. Tell me, are you the capitan? Yes, I am. But you're wasting your time if you think I'm going to answer any of your damn fool questions. Oh, please, come on board. I would like to talk to you. And I see you have some injured men, huh? My doctor will go down and attend to them while you're on the board. Reluctantly, Captain Shaw went on board. Two Italian sailors came down from the conning tower to help him. At the same time, a young Italian marine doctor and his assistant went into the lifeboat. Captain Lazzoli invited Captain Shaw down into the submarine's interior. Ah, please uh, sit down, Captain. Uh, Captain uh, Shaw. Harold Shaw. <laughs> I'm the Captain Lazzoli. Can I offer you a glass of vermouth, perhaps? No, nothing. What were you trying to say? Nigeria? We were hoping to make Lagos. Mm. Nearly 750 miles. Very poor winds this time of the year. It will take a long time. You have plenty of supplies? Enough, I think. The usual lifeboat stock doubled. We abandoned one of our boats. Ah, it is a bad war for us all, I'm afraid, of Captain Shaw. You know, I have a brother and two uncles in London. In America, or many other relatives. It is a sad when I think about it. My officers and crew are the same. We wonder why we must fight the people we always knew as a friend. But you fight just the same. Oh, no, we do not fight. We cruise around, fire one or two torpedoes at imaginary targets, and then when our duty time is up, we return back to our home base. You're joking, aren't you? <laughs> why should I joke, Capitan? None of us on the board here want to be involved if we can avoid it. Far better we enjoy our cruise and then go home safely. We stay far out at sea, away from the shipping lanes, and play car. And then at night, we surface and recharge our batteries. Get in the Capitan. Oh, excuse me for a moment. Well, what is it, the Gabi? Uh, the Capitan Shaw. That was the man who is assisting the doctor. He tells me that many of your men have a bullet wound. Yes, the U-boat machine gunned us after my ship went down. Killed 22 men. Oh, it makes me feel sick inside the Capitan. I don't know what to say. But I do know the U-boat commanders are all desperate and doomed men. I've heard they are losing nine U-boats out of every ten. Now, that is another reason we would like to steer clear of the action zone. The reason why we are here is that we are instructed to intercept and attack Convoy XJ410, which I assume you are a part of. Hmm? 
However, we decided to develop some imaginary engine trouble, and so I dropped it behind. Uh, please, the Captain, will you accept a glass of vermouth from me now? Well, uh, well, thanks. I will. I don't think I've tried vermouth before. Not a wine man myself. Ah, sweet or a dry? Uh, wet, preferably. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will give you sweet. Hmm? I know the English like a sweet thing. Oh, yes. I hope you don't object, Capitan. But I've instructed my men to bring aboard your badly wounded. We can better look after them here. Well, that means they'll be prisoners. So better that than for the poor men to die in a lifeboat. True. Yes, yes, I suppose so. <sighs> oh, I wish you there was something I could do to make up for that machine gunning incident. You can't bring back the dead. No, but I can help save the living from the dead. Ah, it is crazy, but I think I know what to do. Uh, please, uh, wait, uh, Captain. I want to discuss it with my officers and the crew. Uh, Luigi, Romano. Uh, uh, Capitano. Capitano. Captain Shaw sipped at his drink, wondering what on earth the strange little Italian had in mind. He could hear the raised and excitable voices, but was unable to decipher a single word. Then, his face beaming, Captain Bazzoli returned. We have come to a decision, Captain. In view of what the Germans did, we would like to give you our maximum assistance, if you will accept it. If you're thinking of bringing us all on board as prisoners, the answer is no. No, Captain. The plan is not that. My men have agreed that we shall tow your lifeboat as close to the West African coast as is possible. What? Tow us? Are you serious? Oh, we can do ten knots, which means that in three days you will be fairly close to Lagos. Then we shall all have a farewell drink and go our separate way. Huh. I don't know what to say. It all seems mad. Besides, you'll be taking a risk of meeting up with the British Coastal Patrol. What then? Oh, then you must have cut to the tow rope quickly while we crash down. They'll death charge you. Not if we remain under your lifeboat. <laughs> Don't be too sure of that. My men have decided to take the risk. And they know the danger. Will you accept our offer, Captain Shaw? With, with pleasure, Captain Bazzoli. And thank you. <laughs> Within half an hour, the wounded men had been transferred to the Italian submarine, and Captain Shaw returned to his lifeboat. He explained what had transpired to his astonished crew, and within minutes, the towing operation started. At mealtimes, food was passed to the lifeboat, along with several bottles of wine. For three days, the bizarre arrangement worked without a hitch, until they were 50 miles off the coast. Captain Shaw had gone on board the submarine to get an exact position, leaving the second mate, Sam Hewitt, in charge. Well, Sam, with luck, we'll be on terra firma tomorrow. What do you reckon? Just hoping you're right, Sean. Hey, hey, look over there. It's a plane, and it's heading this way. You're right. And the old man's on board the ice I saw. It's a coastal patrol, Catalina. Look, the ice eyes have seen it, too. She's going to crash dive. Release the tow rope. Wave to the plane, boys. Wave. It's circling back. Charlie X, Charlie X, calling control. Can you read me? Control reading you loud and clear. Over. I have spotted Italian sub. It, it, it was towing a lifeboat, I think. Over. So what? Go on in and kill it. Oh, she's submerging, but but I can see her clearly. If, if I go in for a kill, the lifeboat will get it too. Over. Don't let that stop you. Over. But they look like ours in the lifeboat. I, I, I can see them waving. About uh, 18 men, I reckon. Over. Ignore them and go in for the sub, Charlie X. Over. You can't ask me to do that. The sub's moving astern right under the lifeboat. Over. I'm not asking you. I'm ordering you. Get that sub. Over. Order received. We'll obey. Over and out. Frank, did you hear all that? Yeah. Well, what do you say we drop a few charges, you know, like well off target, eh? What's he up to, Sam? That's the fifth time he's blown over us. Oh, don't worry, just keep waving. Well, will you look at that? He's dropping depth charges way over there. It's after the ice eyes. He must be blind then. They're right underneath us.
plane's gone, you say? It was a very slow. He dropped a few depth charges about two miles away. He must have known he was there. Well, I'll have to rejoin my men. No doubt the lifeboat's position has been reported and a patrol launch will be sent out to collect us. Uh, we will surface, but first I want to tell you the news. I was going to tell you just as the alarm sounded. What kind of news? News that has made my men very sad. Early this morning, American and British troops are landed in Italy. They did? But that's wonderful news. Your men should be happy. Oh, they are happy about the landing, but they worry for their families. Most of us are from southern Italy. Our base is at Taranto. We cannot go back. It is a very big problem we have a company on. Well, maybe Italy will surrender. Then it'll be all over for you. Even then, the company. It will not be easy for us to get rid of the Germans. They will cling and fight force us to fight with. When do you have to return? Two, three weeks. By then, Toronto will be in Allied hands. We will have to sail in and surrender ourselves. Well, what's wrong with that? A voyage through the Mediterranean. It will be very dangerous. Allied ships and the planes will be everywhere. My crew and I were talking earlier. We thought of a solution. But, uh, Captain Shaw, it uh, requires your assistance. Will you do us all a favor, Captain Shaw? Well, uh, well, uh, I do owe you a favor. What is it? Well, uh, Captain Shaw, it is uh, this. If uh, we surrender to you, will you take us into Lagos with you as prisoners? We'd consider it a great favor. Captain Shaw blinked in amazement at the Italian, hardly able to believe his ears. Did I hear you rightly? You want to surrender your crew and this submarine to me? That is right. Everything is at your disposal, Captain Shaw. None of us wish to die in the Mediterranean, so close to home. The risk is too great. <laughs> well, what do you know? I love... Uh... I'll have to use your shortwave radio and call up the Navy there. Ah, see, but by heavens, I'm going to have the hardest job of my life in making them believe this. Oh, gross. And uh, can I pour you a glass of vermouth while you're talking to them? And that is how it happened that late one afternoon, a motley, tattered group of survivors sailed gaily into Lagos Harbor in command of an Italian submarine, waving bottles of wine and singing along with their prisoners, some very bawdy sea shanties. Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.